Thank you for joining this ORCID webinar on approval workflows in SAGE 300. My name is Natalie, and we also have Anne and Steve participating as organizers in this uh, webinar. And today, for a bit of a change, uh, we're not going to play a long video. We will be uh, doing most of the webinar live. This presentation demonstrates a range of approval scenarios at Orca Oz Enterprises, an unreal company that has been using Sage 300 and Orchid's add-ons for a long time to solve everyday business problems. We approached them for permission to present a series of case studies and happily they agreed. Here's the team, Steve the CFO, Anne the sales executive, Natalie the sales manager, Charlotte vendor, providing web services, Sue, the office manager, David, the marketing manager, Nikki and Emma are both customers. This first series focuses on Orca's use of Orca's extender workflow to manage a range of approval scenarios. Orca Oz has been using Sage 300 and Orkid modules for a long time, and they're always willing to try new modules and features. They know it helps their team members and their customers. Last year, they configured the extender workflow to help consistency of processes, meet auditors' requirements, and facilitate collaboration between team members, whether they're in the office, traveling, or working from home. They have just started working with ORCID's latest product, the ability to approve Sage 300 records in the cloud without having to log on to Sage 300, called remote access. So we will show you in this presentation how the finance controller can approve change credit limit in the cloud with remote access and how all team members are notified. We will then look at how Orca approves AP invoice batches sequentially, first the line manager and then the CFO and how the, this process is visible in Sage 300. Finally, we will explore how the finance team collaborates to approve GL batches to ensure separation of duties and parallel approvals by team members. The first scenario we're going to look at is around AR credit limit approval. Orca has solid processes to manage AR credit limit. They want to control the credit limit while making sure they deliver great customer service. So quick response and collaboration between team members is important. Pressure is on at the moment to generate new business. And Anne has been working the phones and has finally managed to get one of their smaller customers, Levite and Lightning, to place an unusually large order. That's the good news. The bad news is Leo from Leviathan can't pay immediately. And Anne needs to request a credit limit increase, which she does in Sage 300. And this starts the workflow automatically. And an email is sent to the manager, to the finance manager. Steve is often busy and on the phone, but with a new remote access feature, he now receives an email with a link to approve remotely. If he needs more details, he can also log on to the Sage 300 workflow console. And when he approves, the sales team is notified and can review the history. So now for a live demo of this in Sage 300, I will um, pass the meeting to Anne. Thanks, Natalie. So um, in this scenario, I'm uh, my name's Anne from Orchid Systems. Um, and in this scenario, I'm logged into Sage 300 as Anne. And I have just been on the phone to uh, Leo at Leviathan and um, taken a great order. But I know before I can post that order, we need to up his uh, credit limit. So going to the AR customer. Um, and looking at the credit limit, which is currently sitting at 35,000, I know that um, I need to have a credit limit of 45,000 in order for the order to, to go through without being put on hold by OE. And when I go ahead and save that credit limit uh, request, you'll see that the credit limit goes back to the original 35,000 and I get a message from the workflow that the workflow has automatically been triggered um, the balance has been put back to 35,000 
and it's waiting for the finance manager uh, group or member of the finance manager group to approve that. If I was to change the credit limit again, I'd get a message saying the workflow is already in process and I can't change the credit limit until that particular workflow instance has been approved or rejected. Um, and, as, and because I'm a workflow user as well, I can go to the workflow console. If I was looking at things uh, as instances only assigned to me or assigned to me in a group I'm in, I'm not seeing any instances. But because I'm also an administrator style um, uh, user, I can view all. And I see here's my workflow um, entry sitting waiting for Steve or a member of the finance manager group to um, to approve. And because the amount I requested was greater than 40,000, it's actually made the uh, color of this particular one uh, red. And we can filter on the colors or the categories of your workflow instances. And also uh, auto refresh the workflow instance. So hopefully Steve sitting in his uh, workflow, inst uh, workflow console uh, waiting to approve this. I'm just going to log on as Steve to show you his console or to show you that he sees this on his console. And in the workflow console, as you'd expect, you've seen Steve's, um, it's sitting waiting for Steve to approve. But assuming he's not in the office, and uh, he would have received an email, all the members of the finance manager group would have received an email when that credit limit request workflow first started. And looking at Steve's mailbox, we see the request, um, the email request coming through to approve a credit limit of 45,000, it was 35,000, and the request was made by Anne, 21st of uh, May, we're one day ahead of you, and um, at 6.04. And if Steve was in the office, he could click on this and it would open up the console, and he could go ahead and do the approval from the console as you've seen before. But new is the, uh, the ability to click on this web link and go and approve the, um, the record or approve or reject from there. So this template here, as you know, is um, an email template in, in Extender and you can build up the template to say what you want and to include the variables that you want from the record that you're monitoring under workflow, in this case, um, the customer. And when you go to the web form, the contents of the web form is controlled also by a message template. And as you can see, you can include the um, similar information or the same information. And the web form can have your parameters that you would normally use add parameter in the workflow to get your parameters. And the parameters are can be made mandatory just as if it was the parameter box that pops up as part of workflow when you're in Sage 300. So from here, Steve can uh, re review you know, what the request is, who did it, um, and the requested credit limit is 45,000. But let's say Steve thinks uh, that's, not, that's a bit optimistic, um, and he's saying make it 40,000 instead. And goes ahead uh, to approve or it could have been reject. So this data is currently being stored on this uh, on the website in, in this form. And normally you would use a process scheduler with a scheduled uh, task to run every 15 minutes or so and uh, bring those results or half an hour or however frequently you wanna update your Sage 300. But to avoid waiting for that, I'm just going to run it now. So it'll go to the out to the website get any, um, any responses, approvals or rejects and apply them to the appropriate company. In this case, um, Orchid Extender Workflow Company. So normally you wouldn't be doing that or you wouldn't be seeing that message. But now if I go to, as Steve, I go to the Workflow Console and I refresh, you can see that instance is gone. And looking at the, um, into 
the inquiries going into the workflow history. Um, I could, I've approved a credit limit many times for 1240, but the topmost one is the latest one. And if we look at the details of that, we can see Anne submitted it um, at 40, 45,000 and Steve approved it at 40,000. And at the time of the approval being processed, in the um, the finance manager team, uh, actually the sales team would have been sent an email. So that goes back to Anne and to Natalie. And you can see the credit limit approval. And from here, uh, Natalie sees what the values were, the approval values, the comment made by Steve. And from here, Natalie can click on the, um, the hot link back to the customer card. That's the same as the hot link uh, in Steve's email that would have opened up the console. So it opens it up with, uh, with that particular customer as you would expect. And the approved credit limit is 40,000. And Natalie can either go to the history if she wants to see more information, or she can link to the history from the customer screen. So you can configure the last instance of a workflow for that particular record to be shown from the customer screen. And so when, um, did I not click on that? Oh, it's open down here. So then she'll see also the history of all the credit limits all, all the uh, workflows that have been run against this record, which are all credit limits and looking at the detail log, she sees the same as what Steve would have seen through the history inquiry. So that's how our the remote access uh, powered by uh, Chris's popular service uh, can be run again to, uh, to give another option for the approvals of uh, workflow instances. And with that, I'm going to hand back to Natalie to carry on the presentation. Thank you, Anne. So in this scenario, we've looked at how Orca OZ uses Extender Workflow to support their AR approvals. This workflow is configured to support their processes in a flexible manner. So we've seen an example where um, Steve can approve on the remote console and other team members can go and view the history or see what the status of the approval is. So with this new option to approve remotely and securely, decisions can be made more quickly. And the whole team has visibility as to who needs to do what and who has done what while meeting all the auditors and history requirements. So we have looked at this example around AR customer credit limit, but this can apply to um, any other master file fields in AR or AP vendors or GL account. And our next example focuses around AP invoice batches. And whether you're a vendor or a customer, Dealing with Orca generally means dealing with Sue, the office manager who wears many hats. Sue is used to getting invoices for the office rent, stationary phone bills and the like. But this month, she had to process a large consulting invoice from Orca's website developers, Charlotte's Web Work. It's well above Sue's 30,000 delegation of authority for AP approvals. So it will require sign off from Orca's CFO, Steve. Steve trusts the line managers to be across the details. So in this example, David, the marketing manager, will need to review the invoice and confirm the work has been done before Steve approves the batch. So Sue enters the batch in, um, in AP, the invoice batch in AP, and tries to post it, which starts the sequential two-step approval. And David gen generally doesn't use Sage 300, so he receives a secure email link with all the relevant details so he can approve on the remote access web form. He can enter a comment and then the schedule will progress the batch to the next step and will update Sage 300. 
And while Steve is often in Sage 300 at month end or year end, but he also spends a lot of time in meetings with various stakeholders. And we know he approves more quickly when he doesn't need to log on to Sage. So he will also use remote access and the one-time link to review David's comments and approve the batch. And then the workflow at the time of being processed back into Sage 300 will post the batch automatically. Steve can view the history in Sage 300 and other um, users who have access to, uh, to AP can also view the history. So now to uh, look at this sequential approval scenario in action, because we have different um, people logging on, we will um, show that in a video that is about five minutes, just under five minutes, and then we will come back to continue the live presentation. Just give me a second. Okay, just a second. We're not having the video right now, so we will do this one uh, live. So I'm going to make Anne the presenter again. Okay, apologies about that. Um, and I wasn't quite, pre I was prepared actually for the second uh, demo that I was doing. So I need to just um, go to accounts payable and create an invoice batch. So probably apologies for uh, the slight delay. Um, I'll create a new batch for the website. Um, We won't worry that it's going to um, we won't worry that it's going to inventory. Steve can resolve that issue later. And uh, it's rather a large invoice norm, uh, higher than what Sue normally can go ahead and post without without approvals. And I need to do that too. So forty eight thousand seven one two. Okay, so I'm logged on as Susan, and when Sue either attempts to post a, an AP payment batch or makes it ready to post, both uh, the web the workflow will kick in for both. Uh, the workflow will kick in, check if the amount is less than what she is able to post without any approvals, or depending on the amount, then it gets routed to the appropriate person. So this particular batch. Um, being 48,000, will get routed first to David to approve and then to Steve. So that's how the workflow template is set up. So when Sue makes it uh, ready to post, she gets the message saying that the status has been back put back to open and approval is required by um, somebody other. And if Sue goes to the workflow console, because she can, she has access to the workflow console and viewing all, she will see this AP payment batch uh, that she entered and it's waiting for the AP approver group, which she knows David is a member. So she knows David would have got a, a email to go ahead and approve this. Um, if she was to attempt to approve it herself, she would get a, an error message saying she's not in the AP approver group, or depending on the workflow template, it could be you can't post what you entered. So I'm just going to log on as David. And in David's workflow console, 
when he occasionally logs into Sage 300, he would see that same entry. And it would be um, not just only when he's viewing all, but it's because it's a, it belongs, it's assigned to him or a group he belongs to. Um, if he's seeing only assigned only to David, he doesn't see any record because this particular workflow instance is sit, sitting for the AP approver. But assuming he's not in the office and um, not able to uh, access login to Sage 300, um, he does, however, get an email. And I've just realized that email is sitting in um, my email on another machine. Um, apologies. So I think uh, Steve also gets an email or Natalie also gets an email. So let's just check and see if we can um, do it through the link on on that particular, um, no. no. Just while you're looking for that, Anne, uh, Steve here, the reason why we uh, had done this as a video initially was to show you how we can use our remote access uh, approvals through um, a, a mobile device. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to show you that here right now, but we will be publishing the video and you can then see it in action on a, a mobile phone. But for me to show you this link, I need to just uh, flick to my email on, a, on another machine. So hang on a sec. So I'm hoping you can see my email now. So this is the email that David uh, receives. Um, and as you can see, it's got the same information or it's an email message template from Extender, which has all the details from that particular AP payment batch that um, she, he needs to have a look at that. If he was logged into Sage 300, he could click on the workflow console and open up and drill down to the batch and approve from there. But he's not in the office. And in fact, he's not um, uh, on a machine that connects at all to Sage 300. So he's going to click on this um, fleeting form and this link, this form link. And when he does, he gets taken to a responsive web page. So if this was on my phone that uh, we had connected through, this is responsive. It would have been reformatted for the size of a phone um, and it looks uh, pretty good. And we will show you the video another time to you, so you can see it on my phone. It looks great. Um, but you can see the information is very similar to the uh, the email template and you can control this form in the same way. You create a message template and you include in the message template the variables that you want from the record that you're approving and also the um, parameters that you may or may not be asking for as part of your approval process. So David says, um, you know, the work is done. and goes ahead um, and approves that. And as with the other one, the, this record or this information is stored in the, on the website uh, momentarily. Oh, you didn't see the form. Uh, sorry, um, I need to share a different screen. Um, I need to share that one. So what you didn't see was me typing in, are you seeing the form now? So what, what you didn't see is me typing in um, the work is all done and tested and I had two buttons approve and reject. I clicked approve um, which is now saved and shown me uh, I'm seeing now that this is dead. It's not clickable but it's showing me it was approved as opposed to if I had rejected it I would have had uh, the notification that it's a rejected record. So I'm now going to flick back to um, my virtual machine and hopefully you're seeing my emails and I'm back in as as David and as we know that a process scheduler would normally poll for this result um, so uh, and run it on a schedule but I'm just going to run it to uh, to force that response to come down Uh, 
um, it's brought in that uh, response. And in my workflow console, if I refresh here, you can see it's no longer sitting waiting for David who's logged in, but in the all button, he can see that the, um, you know, Susan submitted it. Uh, but if we go down to the history, you can see Susan submitted it, uh, David then um, approved it. And it is now waiting for a member of the finance group, uh, finance manager group, um, which Steve is a member uh, for for him to um, approve or reject and, and have a look. So I'm just going to log in again as Steve. So apologies about all this logging in. You um, probably don't really need to see this. Um, So on Steve's workflow console, as you'd expect, in in the if it's assigned only to Steve, he sees this record, and just as David can, looking at the history, he sees the um, history that uh, Sue submitted, David posted, and he also uh, should be getting an email. Uh, saying that uh, the batch 97 at 48,000 has been approved by David. And again, he can go to the console if he wants to have a look and approve there or click on the forms and go through to <clears throat> the website to approve. So here you're seeing the uh, website uh, form correctly. And it's got all the details that we included in our template to control the form. So the details about the APE payment batch, but also he can see the, um, you know, the batch has been approved by David and the comment that David entered uh, regarding the approval. So he's in a position now to um, approve or reject based on what he wants to do. And he's going to say, uh, yes, uh, it's okay to post if it's okay with David. and goes ahead and um, approves. And the form gets submitted as approval and we can see that it has been approved, but this is a great art or light blue dart um, because it's no longer um, an active record that can be approved or rejected. And back in Sage 300, as, as we saw previously, we need to just uh, run that polling event to bring down that result. And I don't know if you noticed, but very quickly there, the batch was actually um, posted because our workflow template on the second approval does go ahead and post the batch. But that's your decision when you build the workflow template, how you want that to work. So on the workflow console, as you'd expect, that is no longer an active workflow instance. But if we go to the um, AP payment batch, You can see the batch um, uh, show posted. You can see the batch uh, has been now posted. And in the audit trail, you would see the different, in the um, extender audit trail, the workflow summary, you would see the AP invoice batch. If I go down to the detail, uh, submitted by Susan, approved by David, and accepted and posted by Steve. Um, with that, I'm going to hand back to Natalie for a summary or for a, for a description of the next scenario that we're going to demonstrate. Thank you, Anne, for this um, very live demo. And as Steve mentioned before, uh, what Anne's just done there is um, very similar to what was in, in the video. The main difference is that um, we were um, in the video showing uh, the responsive form on uh, on a phone, um, but I think you can probably all um, see the, the, the power of what we're doing. So this remote access form, which is a link on the website, you saw it a couple of times in uh, in a browser. On a phone, it would, uh, it would look um, 
it just you know fills up the the the, the web uh, the form on the on the phone and uh, shows you all the, the details that you need to uh, to approve uh, remotely so just um summary of this scenario we've seen how we approve ap invoice batches so in the um the way the the workflow operates we can approve master files batches not individual invoices within a batch with the uh, standard workflow now if you need approval invoice by invoices there are ways to do this using uh, additional extender scripts but with a workflow configurator out of the box it works at the batch level so we've seen um, that we can configure the workflow to support a flexible process in this example it was around two sequential approvers so the first one rejects the batch gets rejected and then whoever entered it can change it deal with it delete it go back to the vendor in our case we had two sequential um, approvals and when the first step is completed the second approver receives a notification that it's now their turn to look at the batch and do their part of the process. And with the new remote access, we now have a couple of ways to um, you know, have choice in how we, um, we're going to approve this batch, be it remotely on, the, on that remote web form or on the console in Sage 300 or using icons on the screen. And when we um, use a remote access, we can do it in a browser or in a mobile device. So this uh, freedom of choice on how you can access the Sage 300 extender workflow is provided by Orchid's remote access, which builds on extender workflow and the support of Python script to provide this auditability, the history of the approvals, the visibility to all Sage 300 users, rather than emails just going back and forth between the various team members. So our next uh, example is still around um, Sage 300 batches, but is around GL batches. And it's been a bit of a crazy start to the year, not just for Orca. We have lots of small customers, but also a handful of big ones who normally account for almost half their revenue. And these are long-standing relationships with a track record of paying on time. So they've been given generous credit limits. One of Orca's biggest customers, Great Barrier Beef, supplies meat to the restaurant industry. Because of the shutdown, they're suddenly in serious trouble. And they've advised Sue that they won't be able to pay their latest invoice by the due date, if at all. Steve has convened a special meeting of Orca's finance team, and the fear is that Great Barrier Beef is just the tip of the iceberg, so the decision has been made to enter provision for that full debt into the GL. Sue returns to her desk and enters a GL batch for the provision. When she tries to post the batch, this starts the workflow. In this example, we've configured the workflow to only require an approval for non-subledger -sub batches. We assume that subledger batches have been approved in their various modules, AP, AR, etc. So the finance team receives an email and Sue is on that team and she thinks she's trying to speed up the process and as everyone has agreed on that in the meeting, she tries to approve the batch. But Orca's business rule of separation of duties means that the person who enters the batch can't approve it. And the workflow enforces that rule, so Sue can't approve the batch. Natalie can then use the link and the remote access to uh, approve the batch. And in our configuration, in this uh, scenario, when the batch, the GL batch is approved, it gets posted. And the finance team receives a notification, an email with a link to the console so that they can go and acknowledge that um, that batch has been posted. So this flexible workflow can be configured to support approval as well as notifications. And all the, um, as in the previous scenarios, the approval history will be in Sage 300. So, now we're going to demonstrate this in um, in Sage 300, and for this I will uh, make Anne the presenter again. I'm assuming if 
Thanks, Natalie. You can see my Sage 300 uh, screen and I'm logged in as Susan and she's just uh, entered this uh, this batch uh, for GL uh, for the provision for doubtful debts. Um, and when she goes ahead and makes it ready to post or attempts to post it, which indirectly changes the ready to post status, uh, the workflow is kicked off automatically. Uh, so the, this particular workflow is designed to send everyone in the GL team a email to go ahead and approve the batch. And the four members, any one of the four members of the GL team can uh, approve this, this record, except for the member who entered and made this ready to post. So Sue knows it's pretty urgent. She's made it ready to post. Um, she thinks she can bypass the um, the procedures, although we know Sue would never do that. And she goes to the workflow console and sees it sitting there and tries to accept it um, or uh, post it herself. And she gets the message that she can't. Only the team member who, um, any one of the team members other than the person who made it ready to post can go ahead and approve this. So if I just um, log on as Natalie, and go to uh, Natalie's email. Um, so this, uh, that's the previous one for the AP. Here's the one for GL. So as with all the others, um, you know, this is configurable and Natalie can see the batch total, see that the source at GL, the source code is GL, not APAR, any of those, uh, the workflow does not kick off. Um, and we can go ahead and approve on the website. So I wish I could uh, show you this on the phone. It looks great, but um, apologies that you didn't see that this morning. So Sue can see the details, uh, Natalie can see the details of the batch uh, made ready to post by Sue. And she says this is okay to post. And when she approves, um, because our template, uh, the approval of the GL batch does actually post it as well. So when we come back and pull that approval record back into uh, Sage 300, so just need to run that process again. Um, You could see, I don't know if you did see, but the GL batching posting happened in the background there. And as you'd expect on the workflow console, that record is now no longer there. And it is in the history. So um, Natalie or Steve or anyone who has access could go to the summary log, look at the batch number uh, 319 and in the detail see that it was um, submitted uh, by Sue. Uh, then Sue attempted to post it and uh, couldn't do that. She got the message saying she can't do it. Then it went uh, and Natalie went and accepted and that was on, on the website. So that is the, the demo that I was going to show you. So I'm handing back to Natalie to summarize and then we'll open up um, for the questions. We see quite a few questions there. We'll do that just at, at when Natalie's finished uh, the presentation. Actually, before you do that, okay. and uh, do you mind just quickly showing in the workflow template where these uh, remote uh, access actions are configured? Yep, sorry, I forgot to do that. So in Extender, um, in the workflow templates, this is where you define which, how, you know, your templates and, and what, what processes in Sage 300 kick them off. And here's the GL batch transaction one, uh, the template that got kicked off when the ready to post status was changed on the workflow template. And in the check step of the template, and I'm not gonna go through everything, but just uh, showing that this checks to see that the source ledger equals the GL source ledger GL. And that's the only instance that it will go through and uh, uh, you know, 
continue with the workflow uh, instance. Otherwise, it would complete it automatically if it came from AP, PO, IC, etc. Um, but in the request approval uh, step, you can see, uh, and, and for those of you who've been uh, watching our videos and playing with workflow, normally you have a send email um, action. Now you've got a send email action with a URL. And in your uh, email message, then you can include the one-time link, the URL, which is a secure one-time link uh, to that particular website with that particular URL. So if I look at my message template, This is um, an HTML message template and extender. You can see all the details that we've included and in curly brackets, you can include the values from the record that your the workflow instance is running on. And that's why we saw all the company details and the batch details. And then the URL, just by including curly brackets URL, the one-time link for this particular workflow instance is included in the email and you define your web form in a very similar way, although you wouldn't have the URL in, um, but, and this is the way um, I've defined the web form and that's exactly how you saw it. Uh, this is the heading in bold and those are the details that we saw and it dynamically knows what the parameters are um, based on what you've set up in your workflow template. Um, is that all we needed to see, Natalie? All right, I'll hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Anne, for this um, scenario and a little bit of uh, showing you how it works under the hood. Now, we will um, present how it works under the hood in uh, in more detail when we are completely ready to um, to launch. Um, just answer while we are on the topic of the uh, GL transaction workflow, one of the questions that uh, came through, why do we always reset the batch to the ready to post back to, to open in, in the workflow? Uh, without spending, without, I might answer that one uh, in, in more detail, you know, uh, separately, but what, what the reason we're doing that is um, so that we can run this without having another extender script. So the workflow itself doesn't stop the batch from being posted. We're configuring the workflow on using configurator and those actions on that change of status. We reset the field to open, which means the batch can't be posted. And if somebody else tries to post, they get a message saying that the, the workflow is, is in progress. Uh, and it's only when the workflow is approved that the batch status gets put to ready to post and therefore you can, um, you can post it. Otherwise, uh, once the batch is posted, once the batch is ready to post, Sage normal logic will say, okay, I'm ready to post. So if you click post, you can post it. Now there are ways with a custom extender script to uh, control that post button, but out of the box with workflow configurator, um, the, you can't do that. So hopefully that answers your uh, question, Doug, but if not, we can uh, take that on in more detail um, separately. So in this GL scenario, uh, we've um, looked at how only certain batches entered directly in the GL needed approval from a separate team member to ensure the person who enters the batch cannot also post it. So in our scenario, it was Sue entering and Natalie approving, but in other, other cases, Natalie may enter the batch and Steve will approve. And both are valid scenarios at Orca OS. And the workflow uh, engine gives you that uh, flexibility to have the separation of duty, but also share the tasks within a team. And you also have the ability to acknowledge notifications in addition to formal approvals. So we've also seen how we now have a choice in how we approve using remote access or directly into uh, Sage 300. So team members can choose the most appropriate tool for their job. And the CFO has visibility on who has approved and the history can be shared with the auditors. 
and the processes can be modified as per the auditor's requirements using the workflow template. So we've looked at various scenarios where Orca OZ Enterprises uses Extender and its workflow engine to collaborate more efficiently among the team members and manage approval processes in a timely and secure manner. We've looked at two scenarios around Sage batches and one around master files. So the um, Extender workflows can apply to any master, fly, any master files, so we've looked at AR customers, but it also applies to AP vendors, GL accounts, EFT vendors, uh, RMA headers. It applies to uh, Sage batches, we've looked at AP invoices and GL uh, transactions, but also apply to other AR batches or um, other AP batches. And it also applies to header transactions like uh, uh, orders, uh, PO headers, um, RMA, and all this helps build these flexible processes to serve your customers better. So now we have a choice of method to approve or reject the workflow from the workflow console that uh, you would have seen in the last uh, the previous workflow presentations. And you can also use icons configured on the screens to both progress the workflow if you're uh, allowed and also to view the history. Now we have this additional remote access, which is a secure service built on Sage 300, Extender, Django, and AWS, Amazon Web Services. And remote access enables approvals in the cloud with no additional software installations and no open firewall ports. And um, Steve will give us a little bit more detail about how that works um, after the, at the end of the presentation. So this ability to act on email notifications without logging to Sage 300 is particularly relevant at current times where many team members work from home, away from their office and their team. But similar situations will continue to occur when the senior team travels again locally and overseas to visit clients and suppliers. And we hope that you all as uh, excited as we are about following the chronicle of Orca and you can um, look at the first uh, episode in the, the blog in the news area of the website, which was published this week, and uh, more to follow in the next uh, few weeks. And you can also find more information on Extender, the workflow, and other ORCID products on the website. So thank you for, um, for your time uh, today. And um, while you're thinking of other questions you might have for us, I'll start with handing back to Steve, who will give us a little bit of background about how this remote access works and uh, what you need to, um, to install. Great. Thanks for that, Natalie. Yes, we've uh, developed uh, the uh, remote access service in conjunction with uh, Poplar, uh, Chris Binkley, and uh, those of you who attended our uh, advanced uh, training at TPAC, our extended training with Python, uh, would know Chris along with uh, others of you who may have uh, engaged Poplar for development services. And uh, the whole idea here is we've got a remote access service which runs out on the internet. Uh, it can only, it, it's all accessed from Sage uh, through to the remote access service. So it's very secure. It's only using outbound calls with uh, initially the uh, link information is sent out and it's subsequently getting results. So there's no need to have any open firewall ports at, at all. Um, it's developed on top of uh, Django, Python, and uh, is sitting on AWS. And um, Django is a very popular web framework that's used by a number of very large companies and websites that you'd be familiar with. And some examples there include uh, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Bitbucket, uh, Dropbox, Eventbrite, uh, Pinterest, uh, NASA uses it, as does uh, Washington Post. And this is just a, um, a, a handful of uh, the, uh, the large companies and websites which are using uh, Django. Now, it's very secure, as I mentioned. Um, you, you're only dealing with outbound connections from your Sage 300 side. Um, 
Jaime, I see you've got a question here. Is it uh, only running at Orchid or do you install this? No, you don't install this. This is a service which you can then subscribe to and it's all based on the number of uh, actions that your customer is expecting to, uh, to do on a monthly basis. And uh, what we'll be doing as well is uh, including additional security capabilities like uh, two-factor authentication and, uh, and the like to ensure that things are even more secure and that only the people who need access to this information get that access. I think that's uh, pretty much all I had to cover, apart from the fact that uh, on the uh, um, Sage server side, you would need to be running with um, extenders. So that would be the uh, configurator edition for anything that's just uh, uh, available for you out the box. So with no customization or the developer edition, if you do want to um, customize any of your workflow steps, which I, I guess in most cases you'd, uh, uh, you, you'd want to do. Um, it uh, requires process scheduler if you want to schedule that polling service. And um, thirdly, what you would need are some uh, ORCID users to uh, enable you to set up your ORCID users, your workflow users, and record what, uh, what steps have been gone through with those uh, related users. In terms of... Um Building on what uh, Steve's just said, thank you. In terms of um, LAN pack, so if you are using um, the workflow console or if you're um, entering transactions or viewing detailed transactions in Sage 300, looking at batches or whatever, you would need uh, that uses a LAN pack. Uh, if you have a user like in our AP scenario, David, who's a very occasional approver of some transactions, um, then he could use only the remote access and that would, uh, at the point of um, approving the workflow on that form, that does not use uh, a LAN pack if it doesn't need to log on to actually view, view the details. Um, Another question is, uh, when will this all be um, uh, available? So, as you uh, saw, we this is a live um, live demo. So it's currently it's currently there uh, in uh, beta. We're doing some some testing and finalizing some um, uh, practical uh, practical issues before we can uh, release that. So. Keep your eyes uh, on our next uh, email and, and newsletters. We'll have some uh, more detailed news on um, on the launch of this new service in the next um, in the next few weeks. And um, this is actually different from from our web screens, as you're probably aware. Uh, we are uh, working on our web screens, um, very busily working on uh, the EFT APAR web screens at the moment. So again. Uh, keep your eyes on our information from us on that in the next uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, and this is um, this is separate. This does not rely on the uh, on the um, on the web screens. It relies on this remote access um, service. But the console web screen is another you know, next step in our web screen um, journey. More generally on the workflow, yes, there is sample data for the workflow. And if you download our 2020 sample data from the website, uh, there is a company, Org EWF, that has a lot of workflow configured, as well as a demonstration script with the workflow. Currently does not include these remote actions, but when we are ready to launch, we will um, update some of our workflow templates to include the workflow actions and we will um, obviously have all the documentation of how you um, configure that but basically it will all be around um, you know a workflow module that you import into um, into extender and then those actions that build this uh, one-time url as par are part of subscribing to the service so you don't actually need to um, 
to um, to do too much of that. You just need to put your actions in uh, in the right spot in the workflow to send that uh, that email approval. So it will be uh, very easy to slot into uh, existing workflow templates that you may be uh, working on. Any other um, any other questions? Thank you for um, for the feedback on the cartoon uh, characters. Uh, we've had a um, bit of fun uh, working working on that as a big uh, team working from home um, exercise. So um, I appreciate um, I appreciate the feedback. We'll make sure that the person who designed the feedback the cartoons gets that feedback too. Might let um... the juggler uh, Leroy was Sue juggling her many hats, and I'm sure um, yeah, you're all familiar with uh, with Sue, who uh, sends you all the activation codes and uh, renewals and various other uh, support. And some of you may have met Sue at uh, TPAC a few months ago when we could still uh, travel and come and meet you. And thanks, thanks for uh, the feedback on the remote services. Yes, uh, Chris has done a fantastic job with that um, and we look forward to releasing that very soon. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for your time um, today. Enjoy the rest of uh, your day. It's um, breakfast time for us. So, um, we uh, do appreciate the feedback and uh, we um, you can also always send us some additional questions that you may have when you think about what you've seen uh, today uh, email support at um, orchid.systems and we will um, we will get back to you